Numbers chapter 13 verses 1 through 2. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Get ready for today's teaching by Pastor Sabrina Williams on Run, Tell That. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Y'all sound like some faith-filled believers that's ready to look the enemy in the eye and say, check the score again. It might look like the score and I'm losing, but I got one more round in me. Anybody else got one more round in you? Every time the enemy hits you, he just shaking up your faith a little bit. Every time the enemy gets you, he just making your prayer life go up just a little bit more. Every time the enemy attacks you, he just making you go over to the presence of God even more. And when you come out of the presence of God, you got a blow that you're going to hit the enemy with, that he's going to back up, and he ain't going to never present you with that again. You know that you got the Lord on your side. Do I have any victory-filled people in here that knows no matter what the devil brings to me, you will not win. I already got this battle under control. You better look the enemy in his face and be able, I'm not scared of you. I go to war with you. Because God said that I have the victory. And greater is he that's in me, that he is in the world. You better look the enemy in the eye and tell him, no matter what you bring in my way, God is with me. Do I have any believers in here that believe God is with you? Amen, God is with you. We got a word from the Lord today that we're going to get right to. But first, I'd like to thank Apostle and Pastor Beverly for just allowing me this opportunity. I don't take it for granted that he lets me um, be at the sacred desk to just share the word of God with you, my brothers and sisters. I'd like to thank uh, my mister who's watching at home. He often reminds me he was the first EFAM member a long time ago when he retreated to online. So thank you for putting up with me because y'all might not believe this, but I could be a lot sometimes, you know. I don't know why he say that, but you know. No, you know. And so he puts up with me. And so thank you all. Thank you, Efam, for being with me. I know that we had the scripture um, come up in the intro, but I, I want to read it again. So if you can, if you can put it up for me, I want to read it again. Um, and we're going to begin with verse 1, Numbers 13, 1 and 2. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving, somebody say giving, to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader. Someone say leader. Leader among them. And so for those of you who like to take notes, um, the subject matter for today is run till that. Run till that. And so, Father God, we just love you. We thank you. We thank you for just being in this place with us, oh, Holy Spirit. Thank you for allowing your presence to come forth. Now we ask that you sit this imperfect person down, oh, Lord God, so they can only receive what Holy Spirit has for them. We know, oh, Lord God, that lives are going to be changed, oh, Lord God, only if you come forth and do it. So we thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Since I'm amongst family members here, I just want to start off by um, sharing a, my transgression that I have, we, you know, we family here. I feel like I just lay my burdens down online as well. And I have to say this, that Elder Young, I highly, highly dislike snitches. I just, I just don't like them. For those of you who are a little bit more sophisticated, you might call them informants, okay? But in the hood, we, we call them snitches. And snitches are everywhere. If you grew up, you know snitches would be at your school. They'd be in your community. They would even be in your home. We call those siblings. Okay? But snitches was everywhere, everywhere. And so 
they were in disguise because they didn't want you to know that they were snitching. So they would just try to stay undercover because we had a saying back in the day, y'all know what it is, that snitches got what? Stitches. Snitches got stitches. And so they didn't want you to know. But, you know, when you grow up around snitches, you come used to being able to use snitches for your advantage. So, like, you know, when you break up with your boo, and then you invite the snitch to come hang out with you and your new boo. <laughs> so they can go tell your old boo that you're not crying over them because you got a new, better boo. That's just me. But all the while, while they're leaving your presence, they're smiling at you, getting ready to go snitch on you. And in your mind, you're thinking, now go run and tell that. And even though I have gotten accustomed to worldly snitches, I can tell you that I was a little thrown off when I discovered kingdom snitches. <laughs> kingdom snitches, gossipers, you know, because here's the thing, like, they come with all these gifts and talents, all these different anointings. You feel safe around them. You start telling them your business. You be asking them to pray for you, lay hands on you. You be feeling an anointing of God on you. Then you go to social media and you see all your business on there. And you like, God, where did this come from? And I think that perhaps maybe, I just want to give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe Kingdom Snitches got Acts 1 and 8 incorrect. So I'm going to read it just in case. There's a little confusion on Acts 1 and 8. So if we can bring that up for me, let's just read it. Because I think, you know, we just want to make sure and give them the benefit of the doubt. Acts 1 and 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So I think just to clarify here, just in case anyone was confused about, you know, whether you should be a kingdom snitch or gossip. But what God is saying right here is, part of this is, no, I want you to go be a witness for me, Jesus, and go tell them your business. Like, go tell them how I delivered you from off the streets. Go tell them how I got you off drugs. Go tell them how I healed and set you free. Go tell everybody how I uh, took your child out of jail, how I set them free, how I delivered your child from drugs. Go tell them your story. Go run and tell that. And I think it's real important in this season that we're able to just watch the words that come out of our mouths. That God is wanting us to bring integrity back to the body of Christ. So that when we are with one another, that we're not just coming in this place. A pop, uh, Jeff, Pastor Jeff talked about engagement last week. And we don't engage each other because we don't trust one another. So we got to be able to trust one another because your healing, your deliverance, your being set free is not always coming from the person that's talking right here. It's your sister in the back who's been through the divorce and can help you get through it. It's your brother in the back who's been through pornography and can help you set free. It's us among one another who can be able to help and deliver one another. But we can't do that if we're busy running and telling each other business. God is saying we have to bring integrity back into the house of God. And so in this transitional season, all of us are going through that. All of us are going through some type of process. I don't know anyone who's not going through some transitional process with their job, on their school, at home, with their children, with their parents. Somebody is going through a transition. Even here at Valley Kingdom Ministry, we are going through a transitional season where we're having our spiritual father, Apostle and Pastor Beverly, go to their next as we will soon be taking on Pastor Ray and First Lady Shalon on their now. And so we have to watch what we're saying. So whether you're going through a personal transition here at VKMI transitioning or wherever you are in life, we have to make sure that we are saying what God tells us to say and not adding anything to it. We have to be able to trust the Holy Spirit is leading us and guiding us in the way that we want us to go. And we have to use wisdom when we're talking to one another. And so... I want to use the text that we have today just to back up what can happen if information is given, repeated, or misinterpreted incorrectly. 
I want us to focus on that misinterpreted incorrectly because sometimes we can really feel like we're saying what God is telling us to say, but we add on to it, and it's not what God wants us to do. Okay, so I'm going to use three points to kind of demonstrate the effects of how running off at the mouth can be dangerous. And why, if you're going to run and tell anything, it's imperative that you say what God said to say. So point number one is don't be a send-off. Point number one, don't be a send-off. Now, I'm just going to give you all the urban definition of that just in case anybody here don't understand. But a send-off is the one who misguides or misdirects. One who... Uh, misguides or misdirects. So I'm going to go back to Numbers 13, 1 and 2, but I also want to talk about Numbers 13, 17, and 20. If y'all can pull that up for me. I keep repeating um, Numbers 13, 1 and 2 because I want you to have in your mind what God said versus what was said. Okay? So, one... It says, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. And 17 says, then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some fruit of the land. Now times were the season of the first ripe grapes. God instructions to Moses was at most, at most, two sentences. Moses' instructions to the leaders was a paragraph. God said, go check out what I am giving you. Moses said, go see what the land is like. God said, go check out what I am giving you. Moses said, go see if it's safe. God said, go check out the land I am giving you. Moses said, go see if the people are weak or strong. God said, go see the land which I am giving you. Moses said, go see if they're living in the suburbs or their suburban life. (laughs) God said, go check out where I'm giving you. Moses said, bring back evidence so I can see where God is sending me. Moses, who was the leader, who got instructions from God, told other leaders to go and see if God is sending us a place where he's sending us off. But in reality, Moses was the sent off. Now, we can look at this and say, Moses, why would you do that? Why didn't you just give the instructions right? But how many times have God said, go check out that building I'm giving you? And you say, I ain't got enough money in the bank. How many times has God said, go check out that house. I want you to build it from from the land up there from the ground up. And you say, God, my credit not good. How many times God said, go write that book. God, it's COVID season. Ain't nobody reading a book. Everybody online. How many times has God said, I'm giving you something, and you start saying to yourself what you don't have? God already knows you don't have it. How much more clear can it be when it says, I'm giving you? This is not the same when he told David and them to go pursue in battle. God did not mention a battle was going to take place. He already knew was there. This is what you've been waiting for in the wilderness. You've been in the wilderness waiting for this. Your season is up. God is saying, I'm about to give it to you. I've already shown you that I can deliver you. And you say, but I need to see what it looked like for myself. We don't have the ability in this process season to make sure that we got everything checked out because everything's been wiped out. 
We all started from scratch. That's the beautiful thing about it. We all started from scratch. We all feel like we've been in the wilderness. We all feel like we've been transitioning. We all feel like we've been going through a process. But guess what? Our process season is over, and we still want to stay in the wilderness. No, God is saying, go forth, and I am giving you everything you need for this season. Just leave. But I also want to say this, that in this transitional season when God is telling us we're leaving out of this wilderness, in this process season, he is giving us our promises. But we are allowing two things to stop us. Well, three, doubt, fear, and other people's perspective. Uh, What other people think? These people in the wilderness with you. How people in the same place as you? got a different perspective than you. They looking at the same view you looking at. You can't depend on people in the wilderness to tell you what God is saying because they listening for God themselves. They not the expert. God is. So we have to make sure we do that. I appreciate manna. Now in my wilderness season, I appreciate manna. I appreciate that God will supply me day to day. But I need the overflow. I want the overflow in my marriage. I want the overflow in my ministry. I want the overflow in my money. I want the overflow in every season and area of life God has for me, so I don't want to stay here and get this manna from day to day. You got to stop expecting God to give you manna. That's not what God meant for us to do. He will provide for you in your season and your time of need, but he has given you dominion to take over the land and walk and get everything that he has for you. So we cannot sit here waiting for manna. It's time to get out of the wilderness. And we're going to have people, especially here at Valley Kingdom Ministry, this is, a, this is a season where we're going to a transition together, right? We may have different things that we're going through uh, separately in our different processes of life. But here in the ministry, we got this one transition in, in common. We are going through a season where we're all transitioning, and, and we don't know what's going to happen. And guess what? We don't have to know. God is in it. So we're going to have people come in who's looking around. People might be saying, hey, what's going on over there? We might have some kingdom snitches, but, you know, we got to be on one accord. When the kingdom snitches come in and say, hey, Valley Kingdom Ministries, we've been through a drought, but our drought is over. God is taking us out of the wilderness, and we're going to get every promise that was prophesied in this house that's going to come forth to pass. And so we're just waiting for We're waiting for the overflow in praise and worship. We're waiting for the overflow in prayer. We're waiting for the overflow in deliverance. We're waiting for overflow in the word. I don't know what God is going to do, but I'm just waiting for the overflow because guess what? When it overflow here, it's going to overflow in my house. So God, have your way in everything that you do in our lives. I don't need to know what's going to happen, Lord God. If you in it, I want to be here with it. So God, take me through this transition and tell them to go run and tell that. Now, I need, I need to just talk to the leaders just one minute, okay? Because we can't miss in this part that Moses, who was a leader, God told him not to go get everybody and have them see, because sometimes Everybody who's not in leadership is not prepared for what God has taken them to. So that he needs the leaders that he has prepared to be the one to speak for him. But it was the leaders who sent them off. It was the leader who told them we shouldn't go. It was the leaders who could not see what God was doing. And so their households, that God had the land for their generational people would not inherit it. Moses, a leader, fed the people fear and doubt. He fed his leaders fear and doubt, so much so that 10 out of the 12 spied out the land and could not see what God was doing. They could only go there. Even though they went there for their own self and saw with their own eyes, they could not come back and give the report of the Lord. They came back and gave the report of the leader. Leader, you in charge of the transition in this process. Your words got to be right. 
Your words got to be right because the people that you are responsible for, God is holding you accountable for them, and you will mess up their whole process and make them stay in the wilderness and not get to the promised land because you don't see it the way God sees it. You see it the way Moses saw it. I know y'all don't believe me, so let's, let's go to Numbers 13, 26, 28, and then 13, 31, 32a. If y'all could pull that up for me. Now they departed, these are the spies, and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So they showed them that God promises was there. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And, the, and this is the fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are stronger and the cities are fortified and very large. But the men who had, um, this is 31, I'm going to. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report and the land which they had spied out. They came back and told them what Moses told them because they saw what Moses said because they didn't hear what God said. If you are a leader and God is the one giving you instructions, say it how God said. Don't add nothing to it and don't take nothing from it. So I got a question, just a, just a request for leaders in this time. And I'm, I say this in love to y'all, but if you're not ready, you don't feel like you got this position, process tr transition right in your spirit, you just need a little bit more time, this is what we need you to do. We just need you to hashtag be quiet. Because we tired of this. Our spirits are packed. We ready to go. And we don't need you telling us nothing that's going to make us stay here. So if you just don't get it right, it's okay. We'll give you a little bit more time. Stay in the corner. Don't say nothing. Don't tweet it out. Don't Facebook it out. Don't live it. Don't say nothing. Say, I don't know what's going on. They doing something over there. I'm waiting for God to tell me. And be quiet. We can't allow negativity and doubt to stop us from getting what God has for us. They said to them, we see everything that God has for us. They was physically looking at the people in the land. God know we, we weak. He know we weak. This not even a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. We strong in the spirit, though. If they would have got themselves right in the spirit, they would have went up there and be like, I don't know where y'all moving to, but y'all got to get up out of here because this is where God told me I'm going to be at. You got to do that for yourself. I don't care what the enemy has that's yours. I don't care what God, when God told you to go get it, you ain't got physically the capabilities of doing it because if you did, you wouldn't need God to do it. But you go up in there and say, hey, I don't know what, well, why you still here, but God said this place right here is, man, this show is nice. I thank you for fixing it up for me because I ain't have no money to do it. But you, this the right carpet I was looking for. This the right bricks right here. God knew everything I wanted up in here. Praise Jesus. You need some boxes. I will help you pack it up. I want everything God has for me. I've been in this wilderness season too long. I don't know about y'all. I'm tired. I've been going through too much. I've lost too much. I'm just ready. I need to get up out of here. And just in case y'all thinking, I'm just talking about leaders at Valley Kingdom Ministry, and I am. I just want to be clear. I am. But I'm talking about you at home. I'm talking about you at school. I'm talking about you at work. You a leader there. You don't need no title to be a leader. You a king of the kid. So when people come into you and they saying, I don't know what's going on with this job. I don't know what they're going to do when the school is um, going out there. And I don't know if my kids should wear masks. I don't know if my kids should. They looking for you for the answers. And if you don't know, say, I don't know, but God is good. I don't know it's going to work out. Say something positive about this wilderness experience. Don't send people back to die in the wilderness when you can help them get to the promised land. Point number two. Point number two. Don't tweak out. Don't tweak out. 
y'all need a definition for that? Y'all know I'm urban. I'm just going to say it for y'all. It's when the mind interprets things in the physical realm different from what they really are. Now, physically, they did see what they saw. But faith is a new set of eyes. Faith is a different view. Faith is, I know what it looks like, and I don't even know the answer to it. But guess what? I got faith enough to believe it, so I'm not going to tweak out. We good on definition? Okay, good. I'm going to go to Numbers 13 and 30. Numbers 13 and 30. And then I'm going to use Numbers 14, 6 and 9 when I finish reading this. For y'all, the beautiful people in the, Moody, uh, in the media booth. It says, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are all able to overcome it. Numbers 14, 6 and 9, it reads, but Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jeponah, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we passed through to spy out is exceedingly good. The Lord delight in us. Then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord. Nor fear, he's telling them, don't tweak out. People of the land, for they are our bread, their protection has departed. Their protection is gone. So what was sustaining them in the land has been transferred to me because God said, I'm giving it to you. You need to know that whoever was holding your stuff up, their protection is gone. And then it's transferring over to you. And so you got to be of good cheer and don't tweak out because you got to say, this is mine. Your protection is gone. I don't know what grace you have, but it ain't the grace I got today. So you ain't going to be able to keep what you got because it's mine. God said it's mine. I don't know. Maybe you don't know God like I know God, but I know God. And God said it's mine, so I'm going to have it. Their protection was gone. The problem was only two of them were saying it. They were outnumbered. We got to be unified in this thing. We got to be unified in what we said. We can't have two people over here saying this is a good thing and 50 people over here saying it's a bad thing. No, it's all working together for my good. <laughs> two out of the 12 had the faith to believe God was able. And what they did, they ran back. They ran back and told them, no, don't tweak out. This is good. This land that God has given us is awesome. Don't tweak out on God. We have to have Caleb and Joshua's spirit. We have to tell everyone amongst us, no, don't doubt. It's going to be okay. Walk with us. Don't walk in fear. God got us. He's going to keep us. Stay on course. You've been waiting for this. You've been in this wilderness land so much, so long that you don't see God has given us everything that he promised us. Remember when we was in Egypt? Remember when we were slaves? Remember we didn't have anything for ourselves? God delivered us. Remember when the enemy was after us because they wanted to keep us in bondage and God uh, spared, uh, opened up the Red Sea and we went on through it. Remember everything God has done for you. You got your own story. You got your own testimony. You remember where you were at. You you remember what God did for you. Don't get to this part of your life and say, I don't know how it's going to happen. Remember what God did for you. Don't tweak out. The last point I want to say is don't get left. I love you, but I'll leave you. Because I've been here too long. I'm waiting for everything God has for me, but we don't want to leave anybody. Numbers 14, 29, and 30 says, the carcasses of you have complained. This is God. See, it's different with man talking. They didn't listen to the two sentences that God said. But now God is saying something because he can't work with doubt. The carcasses of them who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. 
all of you who were numbered, God knows your number, according to your entire number from 20 years old and above, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I will make you dwell in. Don't ask God. Pray for God. He tell he going to give it to you and then make him say, I can't give it to you. you. He swore this to them. He told them, I'm going to give this to you. He kept his promise. He just didn't give it to all of y'all. I'm going to give it to your generation. Here's the sad part about that, though. Because I needed the generation before me to help me in what God is doing for me because they've been through it already. And so they can remind me what God did for them that they'll do it for me. See, this, we need all these generations. I need Deacon Anderson to tell me, hey, don't worry about it. Because remember when we was on Page Avenue, we didn't have too much. But then God blessed us in Oak Forest. So if God blessed us in Page Avenue, he's still going to be able to bless us in Oak Forest. We need you. We need all of you. All of y'all matter in this. We all are the ones who sustain. We are the remnant that's left here. And so don't leave right now when God is about to blow us up. New anointings, new giftings, new talents. God is about to give it to us. Everything that was prophesied over this, this house many, many years ago is about to be fulfilled. And we got to be here. And I, I ain't letting nobody take my spot. Look here. I ain't got to keep no title. But I'm going to get all them anointings, all them giftings, all them promises that was prophesied over this house. I don't care if I'm in the tech center. I don't care if I'm working here. I'm not working here. I don't need to pass the title. I need what God promised over this house because I've been waiting for it. I welcome the new people. Come along. But I'm going to get what God promised over this house for me. You better get what God promised you over this house. Because Moses sent his people off. Because he did not give them clear instructions on how God gave them. Because the people of God, led by leaders, tweaked out family members, key generational family members died in the wilderness. You got to say, I don't know what God is doing, but I want my ancestors who are still here to come. I want my kids to come. And long time from now, I want my grandkids to come. I want everybody to be a part of this. I don't want to leave nobody out. But that's not going to happen if we're running and telling the wrong thing. The wilderness experience has been hard, y'all. I know it's been hard. We got some days like, man, they looking good over there. Maybe I should just visit. Oh, y'all going to tell the truth? That's okay. Y'all ain't on the camera. I am. It's been hard. The process of transition has been hard. Hard. It's been hard in your personal lives. Some of us lost loved ones. Some of us lost jobs. Some of us lost all our stock in our houses and whatever's been going on in our lives. Some of us, we've been through a hard transitional season, but we've been the ones holding on. And if you hold on just a little bit longer, you're going to see everything that God has promised for you. As we go through this process, we have to make sure that the first thing that we do is make sure everything is Holy Spirit led. Don't don't be prophesying about nothing. Say what God said. Because it's the word that delivers. It's the word that sets free. It's the word that heals. It's the word that will get you through. People don't need to hear your opinion. I got a whole bunch of opinions. I'm going to keep them to myself because y'all don't really need to hear them. I'm going to tell my husband all of them. But when you're talking to God's people, say what God said. 
And so when they run and tell a story back, they telling them what God said. It needs to be a transfer of what God said, not what man said. So whenever we get weary and what God is doing, I just want y'all to remember, because Moses wasn't a good example. You know, he did a lot of great things, but he messed up right here. We ain't going to hold it against him because we ain't in the wilderness. I probably would have been holding it against him if I was in the wilderness. I would have been mad at him. It would have been a whole thing. But guess what? Jesus got the process right. Jesus went through the transition. He said, not my will, but your will be done. If I got a drink out of this cup, I'm going to drink out of the cup. Because I know people's lives are in stake. It's my assignment. I'm not going to abort my assignment even though my flesh doesn't want to do it. And you got to keep that in mind. I'm not going to abort my assignment because I know other lives are dependent on me getting this thing right. So when you're dis disturbed, when you don't know how things are going, just look at Jesus. He loved you and me enough to go through the transition and through the process so that we can be back in, in good graces with the Father. And that's what we need for all of us to do. My, I'm not excluded from this story. I need to get my whole life right together, too. But I guess what? I'm going to say what God said. I'm going to run and tell everything God said. I'm going to run and tell everything that God did for me. I'm going to run and tell them and let them know, guess what? We got a good God, and he is a restorer. He is a promise keeper. And he's going to give us everything that God has promised us. I believe in his promises. And I got to have faith enough to believe that he's going to do what he said he was going to do. He is not man. He is, I know man has let you down. But guess what? God has never did it. Jesus has never did it. And we could just hold on to the promises of God and look to Jesus as an example of how to go through a transition so that a people can overcome. We'll be able to do this thing together with integrity with trust, and with love for one another. Pastor Jeff, you can come on up. I just want to say, and when we're going through this process, if you don't have anything to say, really, Pastor Ray says something all the time, and it kind of catch on to me. He said, just say God is good. If they come in there and say, man, what's going on at the valley? I don't know. God is good. If they say, hey, you know they're going to replace y'all when they bring their new people, say, okay, God is good. When they say, how you feel about Pastor Ray and Shalon? Say, we met him a couple of times. It was nice. You know, God is good. When they start talking about Apostle and Pastor Beverly and like, oh, ain't you glad? They leave, you know, they, now, I'm going to need a little, I'm going to need more time to say God is good. I don't want to hurt nobody. I'm going to don't do that. I'm looking at the camera. Don't do that. <laughs> Run and tell everybody how good your God is. Amen. Amen. Wow. God bless you. I pray that you were blessed by this powerful word uh, that God gave us. I say it's powerful not because H. Daniel Wilson shared it, but because it came from the altars of heaven. We talked about, and you just heard the message about the power of participating in the process. We need to all be involved in this together. The Word of God says that we're supposed to have an inheritance for our children's children. So as we've done all of this great work over the years, let's now come together to prepare the ground in what we're calling the process for the next generation of leadership. God bless you, Valley. Let's do this thing together. I know you were blessed by this word, and we are so that seed that we can continue to build a strong base financially along with spiritually. We know that you're going to do it because you're that kind of family. God bless you. Apostle, still here.